In terms of the best chicken coop in the world, there can be only one, and we think we found it. In this episode of Homestead How, we unbox and assemble our egg carton chalet chicken tractor. I'm Melissa, and I help build this chicken coop. You're going to want to watch this whole video to the end to see how it turns out. On a project like this, it helps to have an organized work area. So we brought this table out, we're putting our tools on it, and once we open our egg carton chalet, we'll put the hardware on here as well and organize it. One of the first things we did on our homestead was to build our chicken coop, and we made several mistakes. We built it way too heavy, the door is hard to open, the floor, although there's linoleum, has rotted out a couple times, and it is a nightmare to clean. For these reasons, we got the new chicken coop chalet. So now Alyssa and I are gonna unbox it and set it all up. Watch as it all comes together. The egg carton chalet comes in a large box, which is made custom for shipping. It's really well packaged, and I noticed this even more as we opened it up. First impression, just how well Take built this custom shipping right. container was, you can tell they really take pride in their work. And this was evident as we got inside and opened it up. Alyssa's well, a great help here, and after removing the side, we all had one word in mind. Wow, including Alyssa. This thing looks great. It's made out of aluminum, corrugated plastic. The roof is metal. It's made out of materials that are meant to last and will not rot over time. Unlike our current chicken coop, which is made primarily out of wood and has seen its day. In less than three years, the floor of our current coop has rotted out twice. This won't be a problem with our new egg carton chalet. The floor is made out of half inch thick polypropylene plastic and it has three quarter inch holes in it. This was probably overkill but we put a tarp down so we'd have a clean place to work. The directions are found inside the box along with several bags of hardware. Each of them are labeled conveniently. We took just a few minutes to separate all of the hardware out based on the instructions. This really helped with the project. Having things organized up front made a huge difference. A little bit of forethought goes a long way. The instructions are great. They're in perfect English. The first page shows all of the parts that come included in the little hardware bags, the tools you need. Um, each instruction also comes with a picture. We followed it step by step and we literally had no problems or any point where we had to back up because we made a mistake. If you wish to check out the instructions before your shipment arrives, you can print them out on their website. Their website also has some great instructional videos as well as an FAQ section. It's great to have an extra set of hands here. Alyssa was an excellent helper. We pulled each piece out and much like the hardware, the pieces are also all labeled. Everything was packaged great. Nothing was dented or dinged. Uh, the wheels and the axle were at the bottom along with the metal for that. It may be intimidating with everything laying out, but it actually goes together really quickly. And again, the quality is definitely evident here. We love this perforated flooring where the chickens will sit. It's easy to clean up. You can actually just use a power washer to clean it off. Again, unlike our current chicken coop, which is a disaster to clean every single time. Now that we have everything laid out, including the tools, the hardware, and all of the parts, everything should go pretty smoothly. So now begins the build. Be sure to check the description. We'll have links to each step of the process. That way, if you're building this yourself and you're stuck on a certain step, you can skip right to that by clicking on the link in the description. For step one, you want to lay out the two end and rear frame pieces of the chalet with the tops to the outside. This is easy to do because they are all conveniently labeled. Step two will fasten the rear frame pieces to the right end piece with two 3 8 by 1 inch bolts. And we just want to finger tighten for now. Now we repeat step two, but for the left side, and finger tighten these as well. 
Step four, fasten the front piece to the ends using four 3 8 by one inch bolts and nuts. The top bolts are already installed for these and just slide right through. This front piece is really cool with two doors that swing open that are nice and heavy duty with windows on them. Using a 9 16 socket and wrench, we firmly tighten the eight bolts after making sure everything is nice and square. I wish I got as much joy out of using a tool as my children do. I had a great time using a socket wrench for the very first time. Okay. For step six, we need an extra set of hands to lower the floor into place. Step 7 is a quick one, just cut the plastic zip tie that holds the ramp up in position. The girls got a kick out of this ramp, what a clever design. You can pull it up and down from the inside to let the chickens go underneath. Step 8 requires a Phillips head screwdriver to install the T-handle latch on the outside of the right door. For step 9 we use an 8 inch Allen wrench and we connect the D-handle which overlaps the center door stop. Next, repeat the same procedure on the left door. If you have some goats nearby before proceeding to step 10, give them a little bit of attention. Our goats distracted us a bit before moving on to step 10. Slide the front lift frame under the left end of the egg carton and fasten it to the main frame. You use two 3 8 by 1 inch bolts as shown on the screen. Once secured, slide the front wheel assembly onto the shaft and lift the frame and then insert the large cotter pin below the axle. We're on step 11. Fasten the rear axle using the two U-shaped brackets. Do we have those, Alyssa? Step 12, install the lift cable on the rear wheel assembly. You want to make sure to use the lock nuts and the 5 16 by inch and a half carriage bolts for this part. Okay, we're installing the lift cable now on the rear axle. Okay, we got the back cable coming to the front axle. Pulling the carriage bolt down with the vice grips and then tightening this. Then repeat the same procedure on the opposite side. Step 13, slide two wheels onto the front axle and secure with small cotter pins. Actually, there weren't cotter pins. It looks like they've upgraded things. So instead of the cotter pins, we use these. Uh, axle caps. There's four of them. Just gonna lightly tap this into place. You said lightly. You just put it on there, this black cap, pound it in lightly with a hammer or rubber mallet, and it went right on super easy. So now the next step is step 14. Install the lift cylinder by pushing down on the tongue until the bolts line up with the free end. And then we need the last lock nut for this. Do you have that, Alyssa? So now we use this handle to push the handle down until it lines up. That's going to assist and make it easier to go up and down. Wow, that's a lot easier. So now I just put the lock nut on there. So I'll tighten this down. So when we want to move this, it's really an ingenious design. You pull down on this handle and it pulls this cable and it lifts the rear tires up. Watch, I'm going to push down on this. You barely have to push down because this ram assists things. So now the whole thing's up in the air. Now with one hand, you can easily move it and steer it. That is so cool. Okay, so the next step is install the three ceiling hooks. So I came back over to our table, which is almost empty now because we went through a lot of that hardware. Here's the three hooks. Look at this, Alyssa. Yeah. We have to put the ceiling hooks in. Do you, can you guess where we put the ceiling hooks? Right here. Nope, you're wrong. Right. 
I don't know. Do you have any other guesses? Maybe come over here and look. Any other guesses on where we put the two ceiling hooks in this one? Any other guesses? Right there. Oh, <laughs> right. Just don't over tighten it. Until the screw things go down. Yeah, once the screws are gone. Okay, so we have one hook left and we're on the other roof panel. I'm gonna let Alyssa do the honors. Can you guess where it goes? No. Oh. Right, here. right here. Oh, right there where it says, what does that say? <laughs> Ceiling <laughs> hook. Okay. Using a C-clamp, securely fasten the temporary roof support. You saw that piece, right? Yeah, it's right here. And then I saw a piece over here, right here, in the roof bag, roof, there's a C-clamp. It comes right with it. You don't even need one. Step 16, using a C-clamp, securely fasten the temporary roof support on the top frame and center it. That's this, it came with the C-clamp, so that's all attached, it's centered perfectly between the doors. That's just to temporarily support the roof piece, which is step 17. Next, install the left roof section. Alyssa, that's the one with the two ceiling hooks. screws. This driver bit and drill both came with the kit right in the roof bag. Alright, step 18. Using an out driver screw gun, fasten the roof from the outside at all four corners. <laughs> step 19, install the gable panel without the window on the back side. We need the inch and a half screws. Step 20, install one of the white aluminum gussets with six one and a half inch washered screws. Fasten the bottom of the gable panel using the bit provided. So these bottom two, there's a piece of metal behind here, a piece of aluminum. We use this drill bit that comes with it. We're gonna drill through here. And then we, then we hand tighten them with the screwdriver list has got there and the one inch screws. Step 22, and install the roost on the tabs as illustrated. Putting in the roost. This way. Oh. Oh. oh, right, 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 right. Oh, it goes like that. It comes right from there. Step 23, install the gable panel window. Alyssa, we need a little uh, gable window with the window on it. Alyssa, what is that? It's a flower holder. What did you say it was? A chicken feeder. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It'll give you a flower holder too. That's awesome. Oh, the one that I have. Now we're on step 24, my favorite number. Install one of the white aluminum gussets with four inch and a half. We're way brushes. past my favorite number. We need four of these, please. Or the, okay. yeah, four of these. There should be three more. The tiny. Fasten the bottom of the gable, and now we need that little drill bit again, Alyssa. And the little screwdriver. We're on step 26. Install the scallop to gable trims. Lines up perfectly. What are you doing? We're putting the trim, the black trim piece up the back side now. It's two bolts, it goes on perfectly. You line them up at the top before you tighten them down all the way. So we're just hand tightening them 
and you center the two pieces here and then you tighten it with a socket wrench. Okay, you see this gap? At this point you might be kind of worried, but there's no need to worry because we just hand tightened it. Now you can bring them together before tightening it perfectly like that. Using a drill and the one inch black washer screws, install the bottom angle trim pieces Secure the top trim piece, the peak trim, using our one inch screws. You're going to need a ladder or something to step on unless you're tall. With the easy lift system, it easily raises onto all four wheels, latches in place, and rolls easily. This egg carton chicken chalet has many clever design aspects, including how you raise and lower it. We're going to show you how this easy lift system works and how you raise and lower it. So here we're going to quickly demonstrate how to put your egg carton chalet in the up position so you can move it. Simply lower the handle to about six inches off the ground and then rotate about three inches to the left. You'll see the latch pop and it locks in the up position so you can easily move it with one hand. Once you moved your egg chalet and you're ready to put it back down, you simply lower the lever down straight and then raise it back up and it drops right back down to the ground. open it up and they put this whole bottom in here so you can take a power washer and easily clean all the mess that the chickens leave in there. I absolutely love that feature and they have a little flower bed that you can put flowers in there and make it look nicer. As an added bonus, both doors have windows and they lock. Another feature that I really like is you can uh, raise and lower this ramp for the chickens to go up and down. Not to mention also a sliding gate to let the chickens enjoy free range during the day. Also has a double nest box for chickens to lay their eggs and a door leading into the nest for ease of collecting the eggs. Overall, we love the design and look of this chicken chalet. They really thought of everything. It took us about two hours to complete the build. To find this chicken chalet or other chicken tractor options, make sure you check out eggcarton.com. They also offer egg carton mini, egg carton classic, and a yolks wagon, which is super cute. Or you can build your own with your own wheel lift kit. She was just in oh no, she's on one. She was in one of them laying an egg. Hey, that's not the way out. How did she fit through that?